Hello, everyone. Dr. Frankie here. And today I'm going to be talking about a really kind of hot and sexy topic, which is kinky sex and BDSM 101. Depictions of kink are everywhere in the U.S. culture today, from SVU episodes to fashion influences to our dating app bios. But for something so ubiquitous in some ways, many of us don't know much about how it works. BDSM may still feel taboo and exotic, something that you have to be a serious full-time lifestyle devotee to try out. Not so much, but I think people have that assumption in mind sometimes. It may also feel intimidating on a material level. We assume you need a dungeon to complete, you know, the whole experience with whips and chains. In reality, kink or power play is something many quote unquote normal Americans enjoy all the time and incorporate into their sex lives in ways that are accessible and approachable. If you have felt a spark of interest in kink, but aren't sure where to go next, here's what I think you need to know to begin incorporating kink into your sexual persona. And also keep in mind, you already may be engaging in things that are considered kinky and you may not even know it. What is kink? It's tempting to explain what kink is by listing what it's not. It's not a way to violate anyone's consent or something inherently violent. It's not a sign that someone is mentally ill, abusive, or has issues. It's not 50 shades of gray, although no shade, if you like it. A lot of us have inherited some alarmist views about kink or BDSM. That's not your fault. And you may find that it's something very different than what you're, you've assumed. It's easy to assume kink is about the parts of it that are most visible from the outside like the black leather or latex, the accessories like whips or handcuffs or the big intimidating set pieces like St. Andrew's Cross. Those things certainly are a part of kink or a lot of people, you know, could be like, think of it to be part of kink and could be for you too. But the most important part of what makes kink distinct from vanilla sex is invisible to the naked eye. It's more of a power dynamic. Whether you want to use handcuffs or not, what makes sex kinky is that the people having it have agreed to some kind of unique power dynamic for the duration of having sex, usually with one person more in control, like a top or a dom, and one consenting to give up some control, a bottom or a sub. With these elements in place, the stage is set for some super hot kinky sex. But how does the power dynamic and the whips and handcuffs, if you want them, actually come into play? Let's dig into the actual practices referred to in the acronym BDSM. B stands for bondage. And it refers to a wide range of practices that involve physically restraining someone as a means of control. This can be mostly symbolic, like loose ornamental handcuffs, or functional and immobilizing like having your limbs tied up tightly in a rope. Restraint can be a part of other kinds of sex or kink play, like tying someone's wrists to the headboard before having penetrative sex, or it can be the entire point, like shibari bondage. Power and control here are literal. One person can move freely and the other cannot. A top interested in bondage could be interested in tying someone up or restraining them. A bottom interested in bondage would be interested in being restrained. Get started with both partners consenting. That's super, super important. Try lightly grabbing or holding down one partner during sex, pinning their wrist to the bed, for instance, and see how it feels. Dominance. This is what the D stands for in BDSM. This is a broad category, but refers mostly to an intentionally psychological differential of power, right? One person who gives orders or commands, a dominant, and someone else who follows them, which is a submissive. There might be dynamics of rules, discipline, and honorifics like daddy or good girl. Get started, for example, with prior discussion and consent. Like I mentioned earlier, consent's really important. Try shifting the normal log logistical discussions that often happen during vanilla sex. For example, can you move over a little bit or do you want me to touch you there? Into directions or commands, move over there, or I want to touch you here. Sadism. 
Put simply, a sadist is someone who's into causing some kind of pain to an enthusiastically consenting sexual partner. This isn't separate from bondage or dominance. For instance, spanking is an activity that's about discipline and dominance, but is also slightly painful. Sadists find pleasure in the power and the control of affecting how their bottom feels and the ability to impact someone else's physical experience as well as the vulnerability of someone submitting to the experience, which creates such an intense kind of intimacy. How would you get started? Try making an element of sex foreplay that you already use in your relationship, a little rougher and more intense. After discussing it and having both partners opt in, of course. If you usually play with someone's nipples, for example, try pinching them instead, or try quick, sharp tugs of a handful of your partner's hair close to the root while you're having sex. Can you imagine how this might intensify the experience? Masochism. Conversely, masochists enjoy the sensation of pain in sexual situations that they've consented to. This could be anything from impact, like spanking or whipping, to other kinds of intense sensation. Again, this experience is generally linked to a power dynamic. Hair pulling, for example, is mildly painful and also establishes a power dynamic. In addition to the physical sensation, masochists are turned on by surrendering to someone else's control in their physical experience. How to get started? Ask your partner to try the above with you, any of them. Or if you're single, or if you're single, try pinching or lightly slapping the inside of the thigh while masturbating to see how it feels. Hope you enjoyed this and um, please comment. And if you're interested in learning more, I'm always happy to expand on any of the topics that I share. And I encourage you to be curious, explore, be playful, and always make sure to get consent. Thanks so much for tuning in. And I'm going to see you next week.